Coming up, the Prime Minister lashes out at crime. Killing everybody, nobody. No, they didn't kill each other. Let's play basketball. Killing everybody, nobody. Relatives of those killed in that Fox Hill mass shooting come to grips with their deaths. And tonight, we remember the king. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The government is preparing to reinstate the 12-hour shift for police, intensify saturation patrols, and increase the complement of operational criminal courts to 10 as it launches an assault on violent crime, most recently spiked by Friday's mass shootings in Fox Hill. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keishla Adderley. And I'm Kendino Knowles. Well, the Prime Minister addressed the nation this afternoon just days after a bloody massacre on Fox Hill Park that killed four and left seven injured. The Prime Minister outlined almost two dozen initiatives to fight the war on crime, ranging from forming a gang unit to bringing legislation to cut out bail for people arrested and charged with serious crimes, which the Prime Minister said is a major problem in curbing crime. For more from that major announcement, here's Clint Watson. Clint. Following consultation with the Commission of Police, Prime Minister Perry Christie met with Cabinet today to discuss new strategies and the implementation of some that have not yet been in place to fight crime. This in the wake of the tragic situation in Fox Hill this past weekend, where a number of persons lost their lives. Prime Minister Christie made it clear the government will be relentless in cracking down on crime. Reinstatement of the 12-hour policing shift, possibly on new terms, is now the subject of intense study and discussion. A further announcement on this subject can be expected once the necessary consultations with, within law enforcement have been completed. The government is deeply concerned about the number of persons who are arrested and charged with serious crimes while out on bail. This is a major problem in the war against crime. The government is fully prepared to legislatively intervene to impose additional restrictions on the ability of judges to grant bail in offenses involving crimes of violence and the use of firearms. The Royal Bahamas Police Force will also escalate saturation patrols using marked and unmarked cars in hot spots. The police force will be even more robustly equipped with cars and other crime-fighting tools as an integral part of the escalated saturation patrols, especially areas that are known as hot spots in New Providence. There's also a concentrated effort to target prolific offenders, especially those out on bail. As many as 10 criminal courts will be able to hear cases simultaneously. This massive expansion of the judicial infrastructure will enable criminal cases to be disposed of much more quickly and efficiently, which in turn should dramatically reduce the number of persons released on bail, while at the same time ensuring that violent offenders are kept securely behind bars to serve their sentences once they have been speedily convicted. The Prime Minister also adding that government will not compromise itself. And not to have the people of our country have their safety and security subjected to the whims of a small minority of criminals in our country. The Prime Minister notes that aside from the implementation of a number of initiatives, what is needed is a war on crime engaged by everyone, where all energies are brought together in support and unity to fight crime. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. 
Well, following the second mass shooting to hit the capital in as many weeks, the religious community is issuing a call for action to the nation to stop the bloodshed. A prayer vigil was held in Fox Hill on Sunday in the wake of Friday night's mass shooting that claimed the life of four and saw seven others injured. Hundreds of residents, religious leaders and area member of parliament Fred Mitchell gathered on Fox Hill Park to mourn the sudden death and senseless deaths of those whose lives were cut short. Religious leaders noted that crime has gotten out of hand and the public must join forces to help tackle the problem. We can no longer procrastinate. We must now act. And if we fail to do so, we cannot escape our share of comfortability and the future generations will judge us harshly. By the spreading of their blood, with the blood of Jesus Christ, bring new life in this place and throughout this land. We do not always understand what you permit, but we know that it is for a greater good that you permitted this. Well, the Baintown community also impacted by a recent shooting that claimed the life of one while six others were shot at a peace gathering on Rupert Dean Lane. Well, the Baintown community held its own anti-crime and violence rally hosted by Reverend C.B. Moss. The religious leader questioned the lack of outrage over the killings and urged the public to action to help bring about change. There is no question that the governments of this country over the last perhaps 20, 25 years have not responded properly to the creeping crime and social problems besetting this nation. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And I wouldn't want no mother to have to feel what my mommy going through. I tell you, she can't eat, she can't sleep, it's hard. Well, dozens of family and friends of those four killed in during that mass shooting in Fox Hill flocked to the Princess Margaret Hospital morgue this morning to positively ID the bodies. LaDawn Davis was there at the morgue as she spoke with a few of those relatives who say the tragedy has left an unspeakable void. Stop. Why? It's a blow. It was a somber moment at the Princess Margaret Hospital on Monday morning as family members and close friends of 19-year-old Shaquille Demerit, 30-year-old Shanique Sands, 49-year-old Eric Morrison, and 37-year-old Claude Zeno Davis gathered for the agonizing task of identifying the bodies of their loved ones. Shaquille's sister Precious says her family is taking his death extremely hard. She recalled the last time she spoke to her brother. Like, it's, it's really hard for my mother. She can't eat. She can't sleep. I don't know, it's like I keep walking in his room expecting him to come home, but he ain't coming home. Gilly was so humble, Gilly never born and nobody. The only thing Gilly did was play basketball. Gilly never born and nobody. When was the last time you saw your brother? Like a few minutes before I left, I was on a flight going to Freeport. And they saw me say, Precious, I can catch you when you come back. And that was it. Meantime, Shanique Sands leaves behind three children with the youngest one-year-old. Her cousin Letitia Adams says no child deserves to lose a parent in such a brutal way. One of her children who understands the concept of death and she hasn't stopped crying since because that's her mother, that was her heart string. Um, for the other two, I guess they're coping but to know that they won't grow up without a mother, it's hard. And while the family is seeking justice for their loved ones, they're also calling for a solution to the escalating crime war in the country. Whoever may have did this, I just want y'all to come forward. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. I'm just asking God that this country can get back to where we once used to be, where we used to love one another, support one another, because I've been doing this since the last 43 years. And working out there the other night, you know, and just seeing what this, this country has come to, something is wrong, and God is the answer. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News.
In our first look at weather, we have a fall system approaching the capital. Very little weather associated with it, but outside of our studios just now, we have a few clouds. Temperature 77 degrees. Your relative humidity quite rich at 89%. Winds out of the south southwest at 2 knots. Your biometric pressure 1,018.7 millibars at 30.08 inches, and it is rising. But stay tuned. Temperatures around the family of islands, travel and boating forecast is still to come. Well, still to come in the Bahamas tonight, we remember a fallen icon of Bahamian entertainment. And another man arraigned for the robbery at the Deputy Prime Minister's home. And also ahead tonight, the Miami Dolphins may have lost one fan in the stadium, it's going, but they're going to love the Bahamas. You'll find out why. You're watching the Bahamas tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by Lux Men's Warehouse. 